Now we're back in the Harvey Norman Lounge at the start of another week, so it's time to talk pets. And Kelly, in your consultations as a dog trainer, you've been recently uh, seeing many dogs that are showing signs of separation issues. Yes, there's quite. We do see a lot of dogs, uh, certainly with separation issues, and um, yeah, we're, I'm, obviously I'm just seeing more, which is it's good for me. I enjoy it. Yeah, and yeah. help the dogs sort their problems out. Um, so can you tell us a little bit more about what separation anxiety is? Is it something that, because we, we do hear a bit about it. Yeah, I mean, really what we tend to find is that there are dogs out there definitely who are suffering with separation anxiety. So these are dogs who basically their, their world falls apart when they're left on their own. Mm. Um, there are many other you know, things that can potentially look like separation anxiety that are not. Um, but as I say, these are dogs who, yeah, they, they just can't cope. Some dogs don't mind being having a bit of alone time, do they? But some obviously really don't like it at all. Yeah, I mean, it's, you know, dogs just like us, you know, we should be able to cope with being on our own, whether it's for five minutes or a few hours. And, um, and you know, that, that I guess is classed as you know, the norm, if you, if you want to put it in that bracket. But, um, yeah, there are some that sadly can't even cope 60 seconds. OK, and that would be annoying if you were trying to dash in somewhere to the dairy to get your milk and your dog's in the car for maybe a minute or two. Um, so what are some of the signs my dog would show if they've got separation issues? There's lots of different signs. And as I say, some can be quite um, similar to things like boredom and so on. So you do get chewing. Um, so they ca you can get that destructive kind of behaviour. Um, we also do get um, dogs who... You know, they kind of can't cope even being in the back garden on their own, so they'll start coming up to the door or they are um, up at the window. And then, um, so this is oh, this gorgeous Bella who I've been working with, so <coughs> yeah, she's actually watching all her family inside. Oh. Um, and then also, you get dogs who, again, just like Bella, will dig um, huge holes um, in the garden area or wherever they're, they're left. So, how yeah. do you know if it's anxiety, separation anxiety, or they're just bored? Yeah, so we look, there's different ways to, to look at that. So clients usually have to fill out a lovely lengthy questionnaire and then what we start to do is get video footage of the dog, see what the animal does when it's left on its own um, because that's a lot of the time the only way you can find mm. out. Um, but it really depends on, as I say, extreme levels. So is it a mild case of potentially boredom and that's why they're digging up the garden or actually are they vocalising and howling and barking consistently the minute they're, they're left alone? And doing the neighbour's heads in most likely. Yes, and, and that's how um, a lot of people tend to sometimes find out there's a problem because there's a council complaint oh, on okay. noise. Oh, OK, and that's yeah. not what you want at all. Um, you mentioned a while ago, I remember when we had you on the show, about a, a dog on medication. I mean, do all dogs need medication to, to cope with this? Not all dogs. Some dogs do. And usually um, if it's something that, again, if we're, we're looking at the dog, if this dog can't even sit still for a few seconds, mm. you know, and it's consistently on edge, then I tend to recommend they book in to see their vet and have a really good chat and um, because there is a possibility that dog needs something to help it while um, we also set the behaviour modification plan in place. So are there any other products that can sort of help them overcome the separation um, the, the ones, so there's a lot of different things on the market. Um, not everything works for every single dog. Mm. And um, again, it really depends on the individual. But there are things such as special pheromone spray or diffusers that we use that can help with anxiety issues. Um, we also use things like the Thunder Shirts. Uh, we also look What's at... What's a Thunder Shirt? Um, so it's a bit like, I think we talked about it a while ago, it's like almost swaddling the animal, but obviously you don't swaddle their legs in. Um, but it, it works on their pressure points and helps them relax. OK, that yeah. sounds interesting. Yeah. So, um, so we find with some animals that can work, some it doesn't. And, um, and then there are, you know, kind of mm. certain... Um, remedies that you can use, so uh, specific kind of tablets, but that are not, uh, I guess, classed as prescription drugs. So if an owner feels that their dog is showing these uh, signs of separation, anxiety, what is the first thing they should do? I think if they've got a dog that is, um, or that they're aware of, that just, you know, number one, might be following them around everywhere in the house and, that you know, the poor owner can't even go to the toilet in peace. It's like having kids. Um, you know, then uh, there's, there's potentially an issue there. Um, if they're showing, you know, digging or... Um, Howling, lots of barking, and so on. And then, yeah, they need to um, speak, with a, speak with a speak with a behaviour consultant. With an expert. Yeah, Kelly, thank you so much. Thank that has you. been really enlightening. I hope my dog's behaving. Uh, really good advice there. And now to our pet of the week. Congratulations to Sophie and Molly. Gorgeous. Fifty dollars to spend at petpost.co.nz is on its way to your owner, Kathy Strong from Mangatoroto. And if you would like to enter your pet, and it can be any type of pet, just upload a pic on our Facebook page.